Today I'm going to share how I healed from IBS and SIBO after 10 long years of chronic digestive symptoms, so stay tuned. If you're new here, welcome for the first time. My name is Amanda Malachewski, and I'm a certified functional nutrition gut health coach, as well as the host of the Calm Digestion Method online program. For weekly videos on how to find your personalized IBS and SIBO relief plan, please consider subscribing. It really does help me reach more viewers. And also don't forget to click the bell to be notified when I post a new video. Today, I wanna get a little bit personal and highlight my unique and specific IBS recovery journey. So if you're just meeting me, I had IBS for well over 10 years. And I say had because I no longer have IBS and my gut is doing really well. And when I mention this in online spaces, people often say, wait, you had IBS? You actually got rid of it? How did you get rid of it? So today I wanna to tell that story. You see, even though I'm an expert now at helping people resolve their IBS and SIBO, I was once where you are. I was once an IBS patient that was full of confusion and frustration with my symptoms and how they weren't getting resolved. And I couldn't seem to find the right kind of help to get rid of my IBS. So today I wanna to share my story about how I did this, but more importantly, I wanna share the process that I used to heal from my IBS. And this is the same process that I teach my clients inside my Calm Digestion Method online program. And by the way, if you wanna grab your own copy of this strategy that I teach my clients, you can grab that by going down to the description below this video and clicking the link, which is confluencenutrition.com forward slash roadmap, and you can grab your own hard copy of the strategy I'm gonna talk about. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's dive in. All right, so a short little bit of context to get started. Um, my IBS unfolded like a slow moving train. Now, I know for some people it comes on really suddenly depending on how it started, but for me, it was a long, slow process of developing intermittent and random new symptoms. So for a while, I didn't really realize that I was actually having a problem, but then about within four or five years, it became a consistent problem where I was having frequent bloating, abdominal pain, nausea, diarrhea, and constipation. Yay, lots of fun. And I was also experiencing a feeling of fatigue and overall just illness. And I was also having significant food sensitivities. I was sensitive to gluten and dairy and almonds and chocolate and pork and beef and lots of other foods, including gluten-free flour and breads. And I spent the next couple of years trying to heal myself on my own without professional help for a couple of different reasons. Number one, I live in a very rural part of California, and so there just weren't very many options for me. And at this time, also, Zoom was not yet an option. Number two, I didn't have health insurance. And number three, I really didn't know who the right person was to help me. And all my self-study and treatment and lack of good answers from my regular doctor led me to actually go back to school to try and figure out how I could help myself. I decided, well, if I can't find the right help, I'm gonna train myself to help myself. And so I went back to school to study functional nutrition, but really this training just expanded my palette of options to try. Um, but I was doing this, of course, without a lot of guidance, and actually this led to my symptoms getting worse. So at this stage, despite having more access to testing, more access to special diets, more access to protocols, I actually turned out to be more confused and still not feeling well, which was really just a mind. And my guts were still a mess. So at this rock bottom place, I had to finally start asking the question, what am I missing here? Like how come even though I have all this training now and support, I still am not getting better, what's missing? And it wasn't until I met my amazing functional nutrition mentor, Andrea Nakayama, who is the head of the Functional Nutrition Alliance, that I finally figured it out. The two biggest lessons I learned from Andrea that helped me start to unlock the puzzle were, number one, that I needed to start with foundations and then work towards more complexity, and I'll explain that in a minute. And two, I needed to stop applying cookie cutter solutions to the problem, but rather that I had to focus on what was true for me, the individual. So how did I heal my gut from IBS and SIBO? Well, the short answer is with a lot of things, <laughs> but let me expand on the method behind the madness to show you a little bit more what I mean. Now, because IBS is a syndrome, it doesn't have one specific underlying cause for everyone who's diagnosed with it. Each person's IBS is unique and may be caused by different specific things. And figuring that out, of course, in a sea of possibilities is what makes figuring out the root causes so difficult. So finding my way to the right treatments required that I figure out the right list of causes, but in a sea of possibilities, how was I supposed to do this? So if I could give you one piece of advice to get started on figuring out the root causes of your IBS, 
it would be this. Let go of everything that you've assumed about what's going on with your gut up to this point. People often come into me saying, I'm sure that what's going on is my leaky gut, or I have, I'm sure I have parasites, or I'm sure it's this, that, or the other thing. But when you're starting out with this process of investigation, you need to let go of all your assumptions and look at what's actually happening with fresh eyes. Instead, what you have to do is look to your body and the signs, symptoms, and clues that it's giving you to figure out where you need to go and what you need to do. Most of the resources out there for addressing IBS are sharing specific tests or protocols or products or causes that you should address, but you really don't know if these recommendations are actually true for you and your specific body yet. So the first thing I had to do was a real assessment of what I already knew about my unique case of IBS. And that included what I knew about when my symptoms started, what I knew about what made my symptoms better or worse, and to use the answers to those questions to look for clues about what are most likely my underlying causes. And when I did this assessment by really looking at what I could observe, I learned a couple of things. One, my symptoms always got worse with my hormone changes. Number two, I didn't digest fats very well. Number three, stress and lack of sleep made everything worse every time without fail. Number four, despite many elimination diets I had tried, I still didn't exactly understand how my food symptoms were being caused, but I did know that I felt better on a gluten and dairy-free diet. Number five, I did have a case of amoebic dysentery while I was traveling in Nepal when I was 18. So post-infectious IBS was a possibility. So now I had a short list of possible root causes that were directly tied to what I could observe or signs and symptoms I had experienced along my journey. Hormones, fat digestion, stress, food sensitivities, and post-infectious IBS. Once I had this list, then I could choose treatments or modifications designed to address these specific things and see if I was right or not. These kinds of investigations or treatments can take a little while, but they're more targeted because they're really specifically based on what you can actually observe about your history. So remember I said that one of the big lessons I learned from my mentor, Andrea Nakayama, was that we need to start with foundations? Well, from this list, stress, food sensitivities, and poor fat digestion are problems that can likely be dealt with in my own home on my own time by doing some really basic supports. So I developed some habits and routines that reduced my stress burden. I take a daily walk. I've used meditation recordings to help restore my brain equilibrium. I got to bed at 10 o'clock every night and I did some work in therapy. Did these help me? Yes. Did they fix my IBS? No. But doing these experiments and learning that they didn't fix the problem told me that, okay, my IBS problem is bigger than stress. I know that there's something more here to deal with. And it also helped provide some resilience for whatever was coming next. I next used what I understood about my previous food experiments to discover that my food sensitivities were likely due to trouble digesting FODMAPs or fermentable carbohydrates. Shifting to a low FODMAP diet helped reduce my symptoms and gave me a little breathing room of relief with what I was experiencing. But did it fix my IBS? Again, no, but it did improve things a little bit, so I knew that I was on to something. This suggested that there was some kind of bacterial problem and that the bacteria were consuming FODMAPs, fermentable carbohydrates, and creating fermentation and gas that were leading to symptoms. So this was further feeding into my narrative of what I thought was really going on. Same with the poor fat digestion. I tried using digestive enzymes and stomach acid support and basic digestive supports to see if this improved my IBS. Most of those experiments failed, so no matter what I did in this department, it didn't really improve my fat digestion. So this told me that low digestive enzymes were not a problem for my fat digestion, and the problem was likely something else. And I hypothesized that it, again, probably had to do with some kind of bacterial dysbiosis or something that was disturbing my digestive function in that way. Now that I'd done some experiments to see what I could learn at the foundations, um, I had some answers, which was that there was a bigger problem going on than these basic foundational things. And so it was time to dig a little deeper. So the hormone symptoms, when I really started thinking about it, looked a lot like something called endometriosis. So I sought out a diagnosis for this and was diagnosed at the very end of 2015. And this is a whole long story and I do talk about it in another video, which I'll link up here in the corner. But for the purpose of this video, you should know that women with endometriosis are two to three times more likely to have IBS than women who do not have endometriosis. So I treated my endo with the most root cause 
uh, therapy that I could find, which was a surgery called wide excision surgery that I had to get with a specialist surgeon in the Bay Area. This surgery really did address and fix the endo. It removes all of the endometriosis implants with a wide margin of healthy tissue. And this procedure led to a significant reduction in some of the hormone ups and downs, the nausea, and a lot of the pain. But I still had IBS symptoms. I still had diarrhea and constipation. And I was a little disappointed to find this, but this is how my journey went. So finally, I was down to gut infections and I tested for SIBO and found that yes, I had a very clear case of methane SIBO. I also did some stool testing and found that I did also have some parasites as well as some yeast problems. So no wonder my gut was a huge mess, right? So I embarked on a series of treatments to address these various infections with the help of my local naturopath and guess what? It worked. After 10 or more long years of gut pain, bowel trouble, food sensitivities, my gut is finally quiet. That's the way I feel about it and that's the way I talk about it. I just, it's not bothering me every single day anymore. I do still need to modify my diet a little bit from normal. I'll probably never tolerate lactose again and I probably won't ever tolerate gluten again. But I can eat sweets again, I can enjoy gluten-free bread, I can eat out and I really understand fully and completely exactly which foods are okay in a small amount and which foods I really have to avoid entirely. And for me, this quiet gut where it doesn't rule my life and it doesn't bother me frequently is a cure. Even though I have to make still a few modifications to my life, I'm willing to do that to keep my digestion happy. And even if I overstep those boundaries, I may just have a little discomfort and a little bit of you know, minor trouble with my bowel movement for one day. Only if, you know, this is infrequent, like we're talking once every five or six weeks, maybe, maybe that frequently, <laughs> and I'm otherwise fine. What would it be like for you if your gut was that quiet? So to summarize, I focused on what my body told me were the most likely problems, and I tried addressing those things to see if I was right or not and then used what I learned from those experiments to take the next steps. Summarized this way, it sounds a little fantastical and oversimplified, but it really is this simple. And if you're someone who's been facing this big gut problem for a long time and it seems hopeless, I wanna offer you a message of hope here. If I can heal from IBS with my endometriosis and my parasites and my SIBO and everything else in between, you can too. I know you can. And the key is to approach your problem with a strategy rather than just like randomly throwing stuff at the wall to see what sticks. There is a path out of this difficult time that you're living in. And it is possible to see symptom resolution and not only to see symptom resolution, but to resolve it at the root cause. So if you're ready to get serious about finding your IBS root causes and the path to resolving them, I wanna let you know that this is exactly what I help my clients with, and I would love to have the opportunity to help you do this as well. My Calm Digestion Method program, where I help people who are frustrated and confused by their gut health diets, um, supplement protocols, treatments, and more, find their personalized IBS and SIBO relief plan is open for enrollment. So if you think this might be a fit for you, I encourage you to book a free discovery call with me to learn more. You can schedule that by going to confluencenutrition.com forward slash contact. This is a free 45 minute call where we'll, where we'll discuss what's happening for you and how I might be able to help you. All right, let me know if you like this video by clicking like or leaving me a comment or a question. I will certainly get back to you about that. And don't forget to check out this other video, Three Key Secrets to Finding IBS Relief. I will look forward to seeing you all next time and happy new year.